of notes. Today's notes will be on the intermediate value theorem. Which we will refer to um, quite often in class as the IVT. The intermediate value theorem is a, is a really important theorem that you will have to um, invoke at some point in time on your AP calculus test. This usually comes up in the free response section of the test. Um, but these questions, the intermediate value theorem is um, can be kind of simple to understand, but it can be hard to put into words. Okay. Um, whenever we learn about theorems, it's really important to know about the conditions that must exist for us to use this theorem. Okay. So let's go ahead and write down our condition first. It'll be always important to keep track. We'll have three major theorems this year that we'll use a lot, and we'll need to make sure if we know, um, we need to know for each theorem which conditions must exist. Our condition for the intermediate value theorem to work is um, that F must be continuous on a closed interval AB. Make sure you understand that that interval AB is a closed interval. The brackets there mean that both A and B are included, right? So everything from A to B, including A and B. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what the intermediate value theorem says, okay? If we know the values of, um, so A and B are X values. If we know F of A and F of B, so let's say we knew that F of A was five and F of B was 10. If the function F is continuous, that means when we move from A to B, the graph is connected. So we must hit every Y value or every F of X value in between five and 10. Okay. So here's how this works. So again, if F is continuous on a closed interval AB, F takes on every value between F of A and F of B. Now, when you copy down that sentence, that, not, that might not make a lot of sense to you right off the bat. Okay, the inter intermediate value says, if F is continuous on the closed interval AB, then F takes on every value between F of A and F of B. Um, to explain this, I'm gonna draw a little bit of a picture here to help us understand it. So here we have A and B, our two X values down here. And I'm just gonna draw a function. And my only rule is, the only condition here is that my function from A through B on the closed interval AB must be continuous. So I'm gonna put a value here and a value up here. And I just have to connect these things in a continuous fashion. So ask yourself, take a look at that sketch I drew for f of x, right? 
we can see that, yes, that is connected. I don't see any removable discontinuities. I don't see any jump discontinuities. It's continuous on that whole interval from A to B. Let's take a look at the Y values then. A and B here are our X values. Their corresponding Y values would be called F of A and F of B. What the intermediate value theorem says, right, let's say F of A is 1 and F of B is 7, then I must hit the number 5 or the number 2 or the number 3 or the number pi. I have to hit every number in between F of A and F of B. So if I picked any any y value between f of a and f of b, let's say I call it f of c, as long as f of c is between f of a and f of b, there's got to be some point on this line that has a corresponding y value of f of c. Okay? And that would occur at this point right here. See. Now it seems kind of obvious, but it, it can help to think of some, some situations. Um, think about a, a child growing up, okay? In a child's height would be a continuous function, right? If you mapped their height every single second of every single day, they're never going to go from two feet to four feet in the blink of an eye, right? Their height is a continuous function. It may um, plateau, it may go up and down as you get older, things like that. But if, if a child who's two years old is two feet tall, and then you saw that child again when they were five years old, and they're three feet tall, then there must have been a time, if they were two feet at one point in time and three feet of, tall at another point in time, then there had to be a time when they were 2.7 feet tall because their height is a continuous function. Okay. Let's take a look at how this is assessed on the AP test. Generally, I see this assessed in table form. So I'm going to draw a table for you that I want you to copy into your notes. Okay, so take a look at the table drawn here. We see x values of negative 5, negative 1, 8, 11, 17, and 50. And we see y or f of x values of 22, 1, negative 16, 5, 3, and 100. Now, if we see this table and they ask us a question about um, a certain value, we need to know what's true about f of x. And the, the test does a good job of stating um, important givens in terms of f of x. Here's my statement. So our statement here is that f is a continuous function on the closed interval negative 5 to 50. So we ask ourselves, knowing that f is a continuous function on negative 5 to 50, will the intermediate value theorem apply? The answer, of course, is yes, the intermediate value theorem will apply. Okay. Now I'm going to try and phrase a question in the way that the AP test likes to ask them. 
Uh, so I'm going to ask a series of questions about this table. So question A here says, is there a value C where negative 5 is less than C is less than negative 1, where F of C equals 10? After they ask this question, they're going to say justify. So again, we're asking about C values. So some C value between negative 5 and negative 1, where F of C, the Y value at that X value C, equals 10. Justify. Okay. So when we answer this, we need to, we need to do this accurately and carefully. Um, just taking a look at this, looking at the table, we see that we have the point negative 5, 22. So when x is negative 5, our y value is 22. Then at x value of negative 1, we have a y value of 1. So we went from a y value of 22 down to a y value of 1 between negative 5 and negative 1. So the question is, do I have to have a value of 10, a y value of 10, somewhere in between negative 5 and negative 1? Think to yourself. Is the answer here going to be yes, or is the answer going to be no? We'll worry about the justification in a second. The answer is yes. We do have to have a y value of 10. The reason we know is because we know that f is continuous on the closed interval negative 5 to 50. Therefore, f would be at continuous on the interval closed interval from negative 5 to negative 1. If it's continuous all the way from negative 5 to 50, it'll be continuous for all the little pieces in between as well. So here's how we justify this, right? We can't go from a y value of 22 to a y value of 1 with a connected line and skip over the number 10. To go from 22 to 1, we have to go through the number 10. We would also have to go through the number 20 or 3 or 16. Would we have to go through the number 0? To get from to go from 22 to 1? No. Could we? Yes. When we have a table, we have a limited source of information here. We don't know exactly what's happening between negative 5 and negative 1, but I know that every y value between the numbers 22 and 1 has to be hit. Okay? So in terms of our justification, here's what we need to say. Because f of negative 5 equals 22, and f of negative 1 equals 1, and we always need to state the condition, and f is continuous, negative 5 to negative 1. There must be a C value because of where there must be a C value between negative 5 and negative 1. where f of c, sorry, this is wrong, 
for f of c equals 10 because of the IVT. Now, a justification doesn't have to look exactly like how I wrote it, but here's what you need to do. If you need to use, if you need to prove that there's some y value that equals the number 10 here, here's what they're looking for. You need to state somewhere in your justification that f is continuous on the interval we're looking at, which we did right here. You need to state the two points at the ends of our um, at the at the uh, ends of our interval f of negative 5 is 22 and f of negative 1 is 1 we need to state those two and then we just restate the question there must be a c on negative 5 to, to, to negative 1 where f of c equals 10 and then you need to state because of the IVT intermediate value theorem the test allows you to use the letters IVT. You don't have to write out the words intermediate value theorem. You can use IVT for shorthand there. Okay, But we always need to make sure that we state um, the two Y values at the end of the intervals. We need to state that the function is continuous. And then we have to state the IVT. Those things must be present for you to get points. Okay, Let's try another one based on this interval. Say it this way. Okay, value C. So again, reading this thing, it says explain why, the, why there must be a value c where negative 1 is less than c is less than 8, where f of c equals 0. Okay. Now, scrolling back up, let's take a look at our interval. We're looking at x values between negative 1 and 8. So we're looking between negative 1 and 8. The test is asking us to explain why there must be a y value of 0. Right? Why, why does there have to be a c? So some number between negative 1 and 8, we don't know which number. But there has to be some x value, some, or some c value, where f of c equals 0. Okay? Take a stab at trying to, to justify that to earn points. Again, these justifications can be tricky, even when the concept is, is relatively simple. So... Go ahead, take a pause, see if you can explain this, and we'll come back and answer it. Okay, we're back. So to, here's how I would explain this. Because f of negative 1 equals 1, and f of 8 equals negative 16. And because, sorry, this is grammatically not the best, but we just need to make sure we state all these things. And because f is continuous on Must be a C where negative one is less than C is less than eight, such that F of 
of C equals zero because of the IDT. In your answer, make sure that you talk about the two endpoints, f of negative 1 being 1 and f of 8 being negative 16. Make sure you talk about the two endpoints. Make sure you mention that f is continuous on that interval. And then make sure that you evoke the IVT. Those three things need to be present in each case. Okay. Now I have another question for you. This one doesn't need a justification, but I just want you to think about it. So taking a look at our table here, I want to ask you this question. What is the, what is the minimum number of zeros that F must have be, on the interval negative 5 to 50? Now, it could have a whole bunch of zeros, but I want to know how many does it for sure at least have to have? Where do those zeros have to occur? So think about that. Well, we must have a zero, obviously, between the x values of negative 1 and 8. I can't go from 1 to negative 16 without going through zero at least one time. But there has to be another zero as well. There must be another zero that occurs between 8 and 11, because to go from negative, 15, negative 16 to positive 5, I must also cross through 0. Now, there may be other zeros, and there may be multiple zeros in between those intervals that we looked at, right? Take a look at 11, 5. The point 11, 5, and then we have the point 17, 3. There very well could be a 0, right? We could go from 5 down to negative 1 and then back to 3, right? There could be some zeros in there but there doesn't have to be. There are only two places in this interval where f of x must equal zero. Okay, I want to try one more example and then we'll be done. Here's the question based on this table. We see this table. We have x values of negative 2, 1, 6, 9, and 12. We have f of x values of negative 10, 5, 3, 6, and 8. So my question is, is there a C where uh, let's do negative 2 is less than C is less than negative, uh, positive 1. Where F of C equals 2. Can I guarantee that there is a value C where C is between negative 2 and 1? For f of c equals 2. I want you to think about that. Pause, think. Do I know that there has to be a c value where f of c equals 2? Think about it. Okay, we're back. The answer here is no. Record scratch, what? But negative 10 to 5, I have to go through 2. What is missing from this table? Why can't I use the intermediate value theorem to answer this question? But what did I forget to state? What's not, what's lacking in our statement here? I never said that F was continuous. That, that means that there, there may or there may not be a C value or F of C equals 2. So 
So because f is not stated as continuous, there does not have to be not have to be a C value I put this example on here because uh, not to try and trick you or make you feel whatever the reason I put this on here is because conditions are very very important I never stated that f of x is continuous anywhere. So we can never use the IVT to prove anything unless we know the function is continuous. Okay, we'll take a look at this. Um, I'll have another video posted tomorrow. So um, that will be a really important one as well. So this is the IVT. Thanks for watching.